So if we have a car and the car moves along at a constant pace, we say that it has uniform velocity, it has constant velocity in the x direction. I know my video is a little bit glitchy today. Um, but it's going to keep on rolling, rolling, rolling at a constant pace. We say that Vx is constant. And for our purposes, when we talk about projectiles, we're going to talk about the velocity being constant. There it is. Okay, so we, got, we have a car there. In the y direction, we're going to talk about, for the vertical direction, it's going to magically appear. Vertical motion will be assumed to be influenced yeah, by gravity. by gravity. Or we could say Vy will be changing. Okay, we had Vx before. Vy, that's the vertical component of motion. It's going to be changing. And we could even specify where acceleration in the y direction, which we've called AG, and we'll probably continue to call AG, but AY is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared when we're near Earth's surface and living around here in this neighborhood. Okay, so those are some assumptions we're going to start off with. I'm going to get rid of my car here. I'd like to draw a picture. Keeping this car in mind, anyone who's ever driven off a cliff before? <laughs> anyone who's ever driven off a cliff before knows some basic truths about driving off of cliffs? A, bad idea. You always explode at the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> in the movies you always explode at the bottom. But something that you might not know, something you might not know is if you had a friend standing at the edge of the cliff, calmly watching as you drove over. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't hit the friend, you just drive past them. <laughs> what you might notice is that if that friend dropped an object from their hand, <laughs> they could do an experiment as they watched you plunge yeah. to your, well, well, your, your, your feet, let's say, okay? Okay. So if we have this, this car traveling along here, we could call it V, you know what, I'm going to call it V1x. In other words, the initial velocity in the x direction. V1x for the car. What's V1x for the, the object that the person drops? Let's make it a super fun ball. If your friend, the person in red here, drops a super fun ball just as you drive off the cliff, what's the initial x velocity for the super fun ball? Yeah. So I could say V1x for the super fun ball. I'll write it in red. V1x is equal to zero meters per second. What's V2x for the super fun ball? At the bottom, that is. Does it change? No. Does not change. It's not moving horizontally, right? It's falling vertically, x, not y. You could talk about the v1y, though. I could say v1y is zero meters per second as well for the super fun ball. And let's say that v2y was equal to some greater value. Um, I don't know. 40, 40 meters per second. Okay, down. 40 meters per second down. Could be. And so if I wanted to represent these as vectors, if I wanted to represent these as vectors, I could draw little arrows on here. Oh, sorry, for the second one. It's getting faster and faster. 
and faster. Pardon me? Down. Be careful. Not south. Down. Yep. So we can say that down is positive. Sure. Why not? And we can call up negative. So the super fun ball is going to get faster and faster and faster as it falls. Um, let's go back and, and think a little bit about the car now. As the car goes off the cliff, I'll draw the center of mass of the car. Center of mass of the car at some point is going to be around here. One second later, it might be around here. I want to be fairly intentional about this. One second later, it might be around here. Another second later, here. And another second later, about here. This is kind of like a ticker tape. Can you see that it's getting further and further apart as it goes down vertically? Like, check it out. Even if there was an invisible lines that go across, well, maybe I'll use uh, another color here. If I wanted to have invisible lines here that go across, I could see something sort of developing. As the car goes down, tell me about what happens to its height for each second that goes by, compared to if you just drop a super fun ball. It matches it, yeah. It falls at the same rate vertically. Why? What's pulling it down? Gravity. Both cases, it's gravity. What else could possibly be accelerating it vertically? I mean, neglecting air resistance, right? It's gravity both times. As I go forward, though, check this out. In the horizontal direction, and I tried so hard to do this, I, I freehanded it. But can you see that what I was trying to do was show that the displacement horizontally each time was the same? It goes forward the same amount every second that goes by. Okay, It keeps on going forward at the same rate. In other words, when I talk about the car, when I get down to here, V2 in the x direction for the car, oh, I should make it V2x. If V1x was 10 meters per second, what do you suppose V2x is equal to? So is this an answer or a question? question? Okay, what's the question? Okay, if it's going across at the same rate it's going down, does that mean that it's like the car is going at 9.81 meters per second? Um, if it's going across at the same, well, it's falling down and it's getting faster and faster as it goes down, right? So vertically, the super fun ball gets up to 40 meters per second and it doesn't move at all horizontally. The car, on the other hand, starts off going at 10 meters per second, and according to this equal spacing as time goes by, tell me about the velocity at the end in the x direction, not the y direction. Has it changed? No, it's still 10 meters per second. It would be. It's, it would still be 10 meters per second. Oh, I thought you were saying like it was like exactly, it went exactly the same. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. no. <laughs> now, it has x velocity when it hits the ground, that is true. I'm not debating that. Does it have y velocity when it hits the ground? Yeah, it, in fact, if gravity is constant in this little region of space, what's its y velocity equal to? I heard somebody say it. Come on, commit to it, guys. 40, thank you. 40 V2y would be equal to 40 meters per second. So could I figure out what the impact velocity of this ball is? Sure, why not? How could I do it? Let's say I have V2x, I got V2y, I would like to find out what V2 is. What the impact velocity is, for, not for the ball, for the car. For the car. It would be V2x plus V2y. And again, V2x looks like this. V2y looks like this. And if I add them up tip to tail, it looks like this to give me V2. V2x and V2y. And of course, there's also an angle that we can measure. And typically, people <coughs> measure the angle relative to the horizontal. Because, you know, the horizon never, more or less never changes. We can measure it relative to the, the ocean and so on and so on. Typically, we measure angles relative to the horizontal. 
So this object is going to come in at so many degrees below the horizontal, okay, and it's going to have such and such a velocity. We can figure out what that value is. So V2x equals 10 meters per second. V2y is equal to 40 meters per second. And V2 would be equal to, at least its magnitude, would be equal to 10 meters per second squared plus 40. Oh, nuts, I've run out of space. I'm going to have to drop the units, not because of good form, because of lack of space. But 10 squared plus 40 squared, that was a no-no. What's 10 squared plus 40 squared? 1,700, is that right? 1,700, yeah, four, yeah, I guess 1,600, yeah, plus 100. 1,700, what's the square root of 1,700? 21.23. Okay. 1,700 meters squared per second squared. And I want to point this out. If you have meters squared, or sorry, meters per second, and you square it, you're going to get meters per second, meters squared per second squared. And if you have meters per second and you square it, you're going to get meters squared per second squared. That's something that I saw when I was marking quizzes. People are not really taking care of those units very well when they write out their units. In any case, what did you say the square root of 1700 was? 41.23. 41.23. And we're square rooting the meters squared per second squared, so now we have meters per second. And rounding to sig digs, it looks like we have two sig digs here, so approximately 41 meters per second. As far as the angle is concerned, I'm looking for theta to be right there. It's the direction in which the arrow is pointing below the horizontal. So theta, I'm, I'm given the opposite and the adjacent again, is tan inverse of V2y over V2x, because the opposite is V2y. So what's tan inverse of 40 over 10, or tan inverse of 4? Seventy-five point nine six. Okay. Okay. Now I know that in s when we've been doing uh, north, south, east, and west directions, I've said go with the value that's less than forty-five degrees. When it comes to projectiles, you don't follow that rule. You always talk about the angle that's relative to the horizontal. Okay. So this vector comes in at seventy-five point nine six, or approximately seventy-six degrees below horizontal. So we'd say it like that. Therefore. The car's final velocity is 41 meters per second, 76 degrees below horizontal. Okay? We can figure out what the final velocity is. This is similar to something that some of you did uh, in the problem where you dropped a ball vertically in a bus that was moving horizontally. 